Welcome to another class um, in Camera Raw. In this class, we're going to be seeing how to, we can make color adjustments in our raw files, specific color adjustments. Let's open up some photos. We want to make some adjustments on uh, that go beyond the basic development uh, that we've seen up to now. Well, we can choose from here, I don't know, some photos that we can use for this. Um, let's open them. Okay. We can hit here, open to camera raw. We have these four photos. Okay, so let's start with this one. And um, we're going to do a basic development. Okay, I'm gonna balance the lights a little better. I'm gonna add some more light to the shadows. I'm gonna put a little bit more vibrance to these black colors here to make them better. How do you know when to stop? Well, we can, we can use this to make some advances how to know where the limits of our black colors or our white colors adjustments in the exposition is. Well, we can touch the regulators and take them to the end that leaves the photo looking nice, but the histogram can help us with this when we don't really know. Because up here in the histogram, these two triangles are gonna show us both the areas that are burnt and areas that have some impasto. Uh, for areas that are a little bit burnt or that have a level of light that's above the reproducible in like for example a printing or that's not in a color range in this space of color um, well we'll be able to see that in red for the areas that are out of the range reproducing this um, in in the range of colors we're about to see them in the areas of the shadows w that will be in blue if we have these warnings activated these colors are going to show up uh, to give us an idea of how the photo's going. In this case, we would have to lower the exposition, lower the lights, and then we wouldn't have any problems in high areas when it comes to illuminations. But we would still have some issues in the lower areas, in the areas of shadows. And we could pull the shadows up until that problem goes away. So there's just no residuals, guys. It's good. Well, in this case, uh, we'd have this development um, I'm going to level it out a little bit. I'm going to give it a little bit more contrast. Careful, because, you know, we have some contrast there already, which could make us lose some details in some areas. Be careful with your, your, your details, guys. Okay, let's lower the whites, and when we do that, we solve the problem. If I increase the clarity, we increase the microcontrast. If I increase it a lot, here we might have an area that might lose some details uh, in the shadow areas, but it's it's also residual and it's a small area that we shouldn't get worried about. Um, when we've done when we're done with this basic development, uh, when we're happy with it, we can go to make the intensity a little bit better. In this photo, we're gonna get a better look, and here we could finish with the basic adjustment of colors and lights. Okay, so we've seen other panels, like the detail panel to eliminate noise, and in this case, we don't need this. Um, you know, we also wouldn't need here very much of that spot correction brush we're looking at, but we do need the fourth panel, the HSL panel. Here, we can treat the colors separately, that in a photo like this one, where we have blues, greens, oranges, it can be really interesting to play with um, just play with this panel. The tone, saturation, luminosity are the three factors that we're going to finish in this adjustment of, in any color. And here we have the primary colors, red, green, and blue. Some of the secondary colors like magenta and yellow and others that are a mix like orange and aqua, uh, purple. Well, each of these uh, three panels of the HSL panel um, well, we're going to be able to work them, okay? I recommend that you guys don't trust what you see to fix a color. Like, don't trust your own eyes. For example, if I want to give the sky some more saturation and I think the sky is blue, well, I'll probably go to blue and give it a little more saturation and leave it like this. I can also change the blue tone and give it some more magenta or some more cyan and make the blue be a little darker or a little lighter. This makes the sky look much, much better. Like, it makes it like a creamy sky. We're making the sky look good. The problem is, in the sky, any blue or green or yellow, that for us is just one color. In the photo, is it's really a mix of many colors. 
if we zoom in to 100% or maybe 200% and we go to this guy, we can see that the adjustment we made before right here, see here in the before and after, we can see how that adjustment that we just made is actually ruining the sky, leaving parts of the sky with white dots. This is because the sky isn't only blue. It'll probably be a mix of blue, aqua, purple, magenta. There could be a lot of tones involved in the sky and not just blue. This is um, this way with other parts of the photograph that we could recognize as green or oranges or yellows. And the ideal thing to do would be to put everything the way it was, everything at zero, at default, and make the adjustment not by eye, we don't, we don't trust our eye, but just on the color we want to work on. We're going to do this with this tool here, which is called the Targeted Adjustment Tool. With this tool, we can choose the tone, saturation, or luminosity, or we could just click on the tool and go to the HSL panel in tone, saturation, or in luminance, and click on um, the area we want to change. For example, if we go to the tone and I click here, I can drag to the left and I'm shifting to cyan colors or green colors. And if I go to the right, I'm kind of giving it a bluish magenta. So it will move those regulators, as you can see, that here it's moving the aqua and the blue. It's going to move not only the blue one, which is what we do, because we're doing this by eye, but we can click on a number of parts of the sky, and if I want a more magenta tone, I can take a group of parts of the sky to the right. This way, we're not just changing the blue, we're also taking other colors, okay? We're also moving them. I can do the same thing with saturation. Here we can see that agua is intervening in this case, and I can do the same thing with luminance. If I work on various parts of the sky, well, the colors that are in those parts of the sky are going to lower in luminance. The saturation is going to change and the tone is going to change. In this case, the tone, when I clicked here, we can see that the aqua didn't move, but in saturation and luminance, we can see that it did move. I'm going to do the same thing with green. I'm going to go to hue and I'm going to give it more of a green brown tone. I can give it more saturation or I can lower it. I can make it more or less luminous. We always have to keep in mind the fact that we want to make the photo better and not completely alter the photo. But we could use this for some artistic uses rather than just improving the photo. We have the same case here with this rock. I can increase and decrease the luminosity, but if it's an average tone, it's going to practically affect the whole photo. I can increase and decrease saturation. I can change the hue, make it a little more magenta, a little more, in this case, a little more orange, orange magenta, maybe a little greener. Eat your greens. Here we can see the before and the after of what we've done in this HSL panel. We've made the blue contrast better with the rest of the photo, and in the green, we've given it a little bit more intensity. So, if we compare the photo now with the photo we had before, well, we can see that there's quite a big change in the image and there's definitely been an improvement. Once we're finished, we can go to the snapshot panel and create there a snapshot for this photo. Okay, we'll call this developed in HSL. This way, well, we would have that name that tells us that we've developed it and some adjustments, and we made some adjustments in the HSL panel. If we add the adjustments by default and we save another snapshot called original, we can compare them later on, the original and the developed one. And the change is interesting. Let's move on and try with another photo. This panel or this HSL adjustment works really well when the tones in our image are well separate. If we have a photo in which there's only one tone, there's not really much point in using the HSL panel because the adjustment wouldn't have any effect. In a photo like this one, where we have blues, oranges, greens, yellows, we can make some personalized adjustments of these colors. Before we go to the HSL panel, or before starting a basic development, we should know how the program processes the color in this image. 
To do this, we have to go to the eighth panel where there's a small camera. And this is called camera calibration. There we can see how Adobe, each time it opens a raw image from whatever camera, identifies it with a profile, that is a profile that they make to interpret this file that the camera has made. So of all the profiles that this file could have, they give it their own, the standard Adobe one. But if we click here, we can see how there's different ways of interpreting this raw file, depending on, on w whether it's, it's its own profile or a profile that, for example, Canon establishes. We can find these profiles um, in the camera menu when we make a JPEG and choose from faithful camera, landscape camera, neutral camera, portrait or standard. Well, these are the profiles that Canon creates to interpret this raw file. And this is the profile Adobe Camera Raw creates to interpret this raw file. The difference when we're looking at the photo and we start to develop it is obvious when we go from Adobe standard, for example, to camera standard. We can see uh, some tone changes. If we change to landscape, it would change. If we change to faithful, it changes. If we change to neutral, it changes. And if we go to portrait, it changes as well. Surprise, surprise. Um, so why should we always start developing a photo from a profile that Adobe has made standard when we have other options? Well, it's something that's not a lot of people, nothing a lot of people explore. I recommend that you give it a look and that you see how the possibilities of changing the profile or the way the brute data of this raw file um, change the point from which we're going to start to develop the photo. So if I choose, for example, a neutral file from the camera and from neutral, I can make some personalized variations of the three main colors, red, green, and blue. I can also make the shadows a little more magenta and green. This would end any color problem, almost, that a camera can give but we have to work it properly. Then the red hue, we can make it more of an orange, a little more magenta and saturate more or less these rocks. Those reds, sorry. This isn't developing. This is how we interpret the raw file to start developing. So we shouldn't change the image too much here because if we want to improve this orange and give it more intensity, we would have to do that from the HSL panel, for example, you know, in the basic panel. This is basically telling the program how to interpret the photo because it hasn't done it correctly. For this, we have to be sure that the camera hasn't done something correctly. The color isn't real. And go and do that small adjustment. For example, I did that small adjustment. Now I can see the before and after. And well, I've adjusted the interpretation that the program is going to make of this raw file to start developing. I'm going to go to the basic panel. Here I'm going to adjust a little the illumination. I'm going to move the lights a little, the whites, until we get to the right side. I'm going to take away a little of the black so that this information gets here to the left. I'm going to give it a little more contrast without going too far. And I'm going to give it a little more clarity. Okay, so this intensity, I'm going to move that up to general lines, and I'm going to go to the HSL panel. As we did before, I'm going to use the targeted adjustment tool to change both the orange tones. Um, I can make them maybe a little more yellow, a little more magenta, and the saturation that I can decrease or increase, like with luminance that I, I, I make darker or I can make it lighter. Careful that if I have the clipping warning, it's telling me now that this area, although it's orange, is outside the color range that Adobe represents. So, well, it, it should not get to that point. I'm going to leave it there a little more in the middle. If there are some little dots, we, we don't have to worry. We have some red dots here, some blue dots here. There's no real effect on the photo. Okay, so when we consider the rest of this, we can go here to the green and tell it uh, that I want it a little darker. I want it a little more saturated. I want it with a tone that's a little more cyan. I want it more of a yellow tone. Well, cyan is going to make it look better with the orange and with the blue, and it's going to be good for the photo. While we're on the topic of tone, let's change the tone of the blues, making them a little more cyan or a little more magenta. Let's saturate it and take away some luminosity. 
Now we can compare the original photos and the photo we've just done and we can see that the blue is a little more intense, the green has a different tone and the orange has a little more intensity. Okay, so we can go now to the snapshot panel. We're going to tell it here to take a snapshot. We're, we already have one that's developed. We'll create one called developed in HSL. And let's compare it to the original. Click here. And let's call it original. And now I can go between the original, the developed one that was already there, that has a vignette, and the developed with HSL work. We've gone from here to here with the basic development and the adjustments in the HSL panel. Later, if we want to make a vignette, as we've already seen with the lens correction option, here we can go and tell it that we want some vignette in the photo. This vignette would be marking the areas that are going to be very dark, but if I want to really control the vignette, the ideal thing to do would be to make it, or to do this in the FX panel that we'll see a little later. Okay, let's move on and make one last HSL adjustment. Let's try this photo. Actually, let's try it with this one because flowers are something we've already seen. Um, okay, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna start interpreting the photo. As this photo hasn't been developed yet, we're going to start interpreting the correct way we want the program to see this photo. That could be Adobe Standard, or this one, or this one, or maybe this one, or this one. These are other profiles that I created for other work that I have. They're personalized profiles. A personalized profile for a camera has to be made with a specific color card. You can, you can buy these cards, you have to take a photo of that card with the DNG file, load it onto a specific program that will create that personalized profile for that camera in those light conditions. It's normal for the manufacturer to give us some profiles and the people at Adobe give us an extra one, the Adobe standard, with which any photo is opened when, it takes, when it's taken from that camera. I'm gonna change from Adobe standard to camera standard and look at the change in the photo. If I start in Camera Standard or Camera Vivid, I get these colors that are more saturated that can give me some problems here. I can see some colors out of the tonal range that Adobe RGB represents. So in some way, I would have to recover that part of the information that we've lost. Okay. Let's give a little bit more light to the shadow or change the tone of the photo to avoid losing those tones. As I can't do this with the color temperature because it would give me a lot of problems, I'm going to leave that to one side. I'm going to make a quick development of the light. I can give it a little more exposition. I can give it a little more contrast. I can take away some of the white. I can take away some of the illuminations, make it, give it some more clarity and give it some more intensity. Here I can already see that there's a problem an adjustment of the light that's a little yellow here on the rock. So I can go to the HSL panel, tell it that I'm going to use the targeted adjustment and change the tone of this part of the photo. How? Clicking on it and taking the tone to the right or to the left until I get the tone I want. In this case, I want this one. I can increase the saturation or lower it. I, if I want to lower it a little, uh, and I can give it more luminosity or have it a little more contained. I can do that with any part of the photo that I click on. For example, if I want to change the tone of this zone here, a little bluer tone, I can give it more light or less light. If I give it less light, it's in the range that Adobe RGB can represent. I can lower the saturation as well as increase it it will affect all of the parts of the image with this same color. It's not about area, it's about color. If I click here and I go to the left, we can see um, that not just the rocks are gonna change, but also the sky, because it's the same 
tone as we have in this area. So be careful with that because we could alter parts of the photo that we think we're not touching with this tool. Here we can see uh, the before and the after. Okay, so before we had some areas of the image that were outside of the range and after with these areas corrected and with the tones a little more intense, a little more to our taste, let's leave this. And it's really quick once we get the hang of doing this with this tool, it's really easy to just go over the part of the photo that we want to change, click and take that area to where we want to. Let's take advantage of this to go over it with the spot removal tool and get rid of you know this area here, erasing this line here. It's like a it's like a plane crossing the sky. Seeing as this is easy to do, we'll start with this here. We'll we'll be putting on a small size, the type to heal, and we'll make a line here on what we want to heal. It'll take reference from above and from below, and it's going to correct that line that we're telling it to show us. We're going to remove softness so we can see how it corrects it. And if I give it less softness, or if I give it more softness. With more softness, it'll completely correct it. With less, it corrects it, but there's an area here that doesn't look very good. So we're going to make another adjustment to get rid of it. Okay. That way I can erase the problem. I'm going to eliminate the shadow of the tripod here. I'm going to tell it here that I want to see uh, the overlay. In this case, uh, in this case, I've chosen a good area to correct. Um, we're going to do the same here and here in this case as well. Perfect. This will be the final photo. Um, let's see here the corrections before and after. Very good. If we want to erase this line that's left, we can also make another adjustment. And there we go. We got a little dot there. Let's see why. Let's use another reference. And it looks like now there's no problem. All right, well, um, let's go to the last panel. And we will call this developed, corrected, and HSL. This way we could compare the after with the, f the original. Um, let's call this one original. And we could see how we've gone from the original to this photo here. The change in the color is quite a lot. The tones are adjusted. There's nothing clipping. We've gotten rid of this line that crossed the photo. We got rid of that reflection of the tripod in the sea. And now it's just how we want it. Okay, so this is what we can do for now with the HSL panel. That we'll continue looking at when we adjust an image to change it to grayscale in a class um, that's, you know, in a future class. To do this, we have to click here and see how to adjust, instead of the colors, the gray tones of an image. But that's that's in the future. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Have a good day. Bye, guys. See you later.